Hello? Hello, Nelson? Can you speak up? Yes, it's me. I can barely hear you. This is Dave from FedEx. Dave from FedEx. What are you on? Are you on a speakerphone? Turn your phone the opposite way around so the, the your mouth I'm, is I'm next to the microphone. Right I, I, I'm driving right now. Oh, holy shit. Your, your hands free is garbage. It is. Well, well what's, what's your question? Can you just put the phone up to your ear so I can hear you? Jesus fucking Christ. What is, what is your problem? Well, how about this? Why don't you call me later? No, no, this is very important. We got a package here for you at FedEx. Okay. And But it smelled like marijuana, so we had to open it. A package that smells like marijuana? Yeah, so we had to open it. It's we, we are required by law. If we smell a package, if we have a package that smells like marijuana, we must open it. It's the law. It's so, kind of weird, though, because I'm not expecting anything... But I actually have no idea what to talk about. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna play it that way, aren't you? You're gonna pretend you didn't you didn't order this marijuana. I'm not playing, I'm not playing it. I'm not playing it anyway. I have a job, and if I spoke marijuana, I would lose my 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 big salary. So well, you know what? Don't you, smoke, don't, you don't you don't. I don't smoke marijuana. You don't have to smoke it to sell it, do you? Because th- this is this is like seller's quantity. This is a large box. Well, first of all, like I said, I don't know who you are. Uh, I, don't this, know how you I got my think number. I told you this is Dave from FedEx. Well, I mean, yeah, you can tell me anything. You might be the janitor at FedEx, for all I know. I have Whoa. no idea. You must listen to my show. But here's the thing. Yeah. Here, here's What's the. Pr- the thing? I'm sorry. What? Give me, give me a second. I don't want to miss my exit over here. Don't take that exit. <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So who are you again? You don't. You don't sound like somebody that works at FedEx, actually. I don't? No, because people that call me from FedEx in the past, they're friendly. Right, yeah. That was before you started having marijuana shipped to our store. Well, like I said, I don't don't, don't sell marijuana. I don't smoke marijuana. Oh, now now you don't sell it, also. I don't sell it. I don't do it. I don't nothing. I don't even know how to spell marijuana. How about that? You know, you, sh- you, shouldn't, you shouldn't even be driving while you're stoned. Okay. Who is this, man? I've told you several times this is Dave. Anyway, my co-worker... Right, just, I'm about to hang up on you. Oh, don't hang up. Don't, don't hang up. Because okay. he- here's the thing. Like, really it turned out it wasn't your package that smelled like weed. It was my jacket because I was smoking last night. What the hell? Is this a prank call? What is this? No, this it's is not. like the weirdest... This is the weirdest phone call I've gotten in, in, in five I just, years working for my company. I wanted to apologize for, for the accusation because I mean, how was I to know? You know, really, I, I'm. It, it was my jacket. I feel so stupid. So why would so why would you not say that at the beginning? Why are you telling me this now? After waiting, you know what? I, I'm a little high right now, so don't blame me. Okay, I'm not blaming you, but um, that's pretty weird. So, anyways, what's up? I just want to hang up with you because your phone is driving. Your phone is pissing me off. Like I can't even hear. It is. You. I, 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 you know what? I don't blame you. Some, sometimes, yeah, it, it, it could be a pain. So, um, do you just have your, day, your iPhone laying in the seat next to you or something? Like I said, I, I literally have my phone Velcro to the dashboard, and I'm oh. speaking to you via uh, speakerphone. How how ghetto are you? I'm actually pretty. I, I'm actually pretty well off as far as money. Oh, really? And you can't afford a Bluetooth hands-free thing for your car? Is you that... know what? I have tinnitus. I don't know if you ever heard of tinnitus, but yeah, that actually bothers my tinnitus. <laughs> that sounds like a stupid excuse. Okay. Well, hey, brother. Listen, I'm I'm actually doing important stuff. You know, I'm I'm not at home just calling people trying to prank them. You're in porn reason. stuff. What? But I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually let you go. Okay. All right, all right. Well, thank you. I'm sorry I opened yeah, your you box. Have a very, you have a very good day. We do have a box here for you, and I'm sorry I opened it. everybody you're listening to the snowplow show i'm your host arby it's october 12th 
2018. This is episode 503, and it's brought to you by our sponsors, DeLorean Jackson, ICU, Lion9, Mr. John, and Nikish. Those are five of the many people supporting us over at patreon.com slash phone losers. That's the site where you get extra shows every single week and sometimes videos and sometimes early releases of things. There's a new Brad's Cactus Shack over there, which I haven't put out to the general public yet it's from a week or two ago. If you're interested in something like that, thank you everyone who's been supporting and all the new people who have signed up recently, like Matthew J and Alexander N, Nigel B, Alexa Singh, Michael Waters, my... What the fuck? The shut, shut the fuck up, Alexa. Alexa, shut up. Alexa, shut up. People always using the A word as their Patreon name for some reason. Uh, Michael W, Melissa M, Zelfus, Brian K, Jim Dusky, Craig C, Joshua V, Scott J, Ben W. Holy shit, it's been a while. Uh, Ryan Z, Joey, Entertaining Clown. And I think that's it. Welcome to the exclusive Patreon club, everyone. There's a brand new episode of Mr. Dabalina's Wonderful World of Prank Calls out. It's called Grocery Store Complainers, and it features a bunch of phone calls that led to my arrest a couple years ago. It's the first time I've really gone back and listened to all of those calls since all of that craziness happened. And it was kind of fun to hear all of those again. If you'd like to go back and listen to the grocery store complainer calls, you can find those at worldofprankcalls.com or by searching for World of Prank Calls on your podcast app or on YouTube or wherever else. You know, just look around. You'll find it. I'm putting a link to that in the show notes right now over at snowplowshow.com. Did I mention that my show's on Spotify yet? All of my shows, they're now on Spotify. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that on the last show. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that on the last show. But just in case, all of my shows are on Spotify now. I don't think I really have any other announcements. So let's just get into the live show that happened yesterday. Yesterday I did a live show right before the Madhouse show with Carlito. And I did more of those package delivery calls. It was a lot of fun. I took suggestions from the listeners in the chat room who came up with some pretty crazy ideas that worked out pretty well. I still want to do another one, though because it was kind of a short show. So we should do that soon. Again, more package delivery calls. Those are so much fun. Anyway, here is the live show that I did yesterday. Um, I, I rubbed my butt on the watch. You're speaking to what? what? I rubbed my butt on the watch. I, I, it seemed funny at the time. Okay, I was just thinking. Mm-hmm. That if you get the raccoon, I want a half. If you get what? If you get the raccoon, I want a half. You want half of the raccoon? I want a half of the raccoon. You want to have it? Holy crap, that's a long song. Okay, I need to start because Carlito usually starts his show at, um, you know, like in 15 minutes. He says he's going to be a little bit late today. I don't know what that means. That could mean 20 minutes. Could mean five hours. Who knows? He's not responding to me now. Fucking asshole. Um, So, yeah, let's see. Um, Carlito show. Right after this show, I'm just going to do a few of those uh, package delivery calls I did on the most recent show. Uh, using the same list that was sent to me by Joe. Thanks, Joe. Okay, yeah, I think I'm ready. So, yeah, I'm just going to call a bunch of numbers. When I was calling these the other day for the show that I did, they, they like, I don't know, I got a lot of just, like, no answers. So this is probably going to be a bunch of ringing phones today. Oh, and what I'm going to need from you guys is, uh, number one, reason... Uh, or, or, yeah, the reason that I did not leave their package uh, at their door. We got to come up with wacky reasons. Um, what's what's the other thing? <laughs> oh, yeah, where did I leave their package? That's number one. Number two is the reason. Hi, you have reached the Foster residence. Grandma and Grandpa. Okay, Grandma and Grandpa Foster are not there. <laughs> Already a brilliant one. 
Satan's onion ring says because their house is I think their house is haunted. <laughs> Hello? Hey there, it's uh, Roy from the UPS um, delivery. I'm the person, the delivery guy. I needed to let you know that I tried to send you a package today. Who is this again now? I'm with UPS. Um, I'm the guy uh -huh. that delivers your packages. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. I've Yeah. Uh, I just needed to let you know that um, I brought you a package today. Are you home? No, I'm not. Wh who is it from? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I didn't read it. I already threw it up on the roof. You threw it on the roof? Yeah, I just kind of threw it up on the roof and ran. I didn't mean to throw it that high. I was trying to, like, just bank it off of the top of the, like, the gutter. And make it land on the roof. I mean, make it land on the porch, but instead it just went right up on the roof. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so confused. Is this a prank? No. I'm sorry. I'm, now, so this is, you're telling me, you're calling me to tell me that the pa uh, package has come from me, but it's on my roof? Yeah, it's on the roof. I'm, I'm very sorry about that. Are you able to get out on the roof and get it? Well, no, I'm not at home. Okay, well, I mean, when you get home, I, I know you can't do it remotely. Like, can you get up so, there? No, I, I don't have a, a ladder to go up on my roof. And, I'm like, how did the package get on my roof? Well, I threw it there. I threw. I was trying to move really fast because I didn't want to be your, around your house for very long because um, it was giving off some bad vibes. Who are you? Uh, my name is Roy. I'm with UPS. This is Christina, right? I'm gonna have to go because this is scaring me. What, what do you mean bye it's bye. scaring you? Wait, don't be. Why would you be? Oh God. She she's. It is yeah. It is Halloween, right? It's October. She's supposed to be scared. That's great. Very first call, and I scared somebody. I couldn't look at the reasons quickly enough. So I just told her I threw it on the roof. Sorry if I didn't use your idea. <laughs> I was going to offer to like drive my truck up into the yard and climb on top of it and get on the roof. You have reached the voicemail. Totally not a scammer wants me to say I'm a registered sex offender and I thought they had kids. So I can't come up to their house. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voicemail. I'll say I have an app. It's, it's an app for sex offenders that shows them the radiuses they are not allowed to go to. And their house is on the, in the radius. So I'm actually calling from the UPS number. And that's good because the lady who is scared, she, she can call them. And UPS will say, we don't know what's going on. We're getting all these crazy calls. But we're pretty sure. Oh, hey, Glenn. Hello? Hey, it's uh, Roy. I'm, I'm with the UPS. We have a delivery for you today. Your UPS driver? Correct, yes. And where are you located right now? Um, well, I was trying to... I, I just left a package at your house on Lake Road, apartment 432. Okay. But I threw it up on the roof because I didn't want any package thieves to get it. <laughs> okay. So Thanks. It, there's, no, there's no roof there. I mean, there's no home there. What do you mean there's no home there? Yeah, man, it's a UPS box. Oh, man, I threw it on the... How did I not know that? Yeah, well, you're not a UPS driver. I threw it up on the roof, though, like of the UPS yeah, store. But what a what a kerfuffle! I, I'm sure you did. No, I did. Okay, have a good have a good one. Well, I mean, you can come here and get it then. <laughs> Shit. Today's show's not going well. McScat says I saw some sad kids that needed a fort, so I gave them the box. <laughs> That's a great idea. Hello? Hey there, this is Roy. I'm the um, UPS delivery driver. I was trying yes. to de deliver a package to you today. Yes. Do you know the kids that live near your house? It's like a group of them. They're like three houses down. No. Okay, because I gave your box to them. Are you for real? My husband was home all day long. I Tell know. He has never left his house. 
I know. I didn't even come to your house, though, because they were like a few houses before you. They're on the same block as you? I don't know any kids who live. You gave my package to someone else? Yeah. Are you, are you real? They're like a bunch of 12 year olds. You really? What? How did you get my phone number? Uh, well, it's on the box. But these kids were, it's like not on your street, but it's around the corner over on Harvest. I don't know any kids. Okay. Why well, didn't you leave it at my house and ring the bell? They're, they're making like a, a box fort, and your box was kind of like large and flat-ish. So I gave it to them to, they're, they're just using it for their box fort. They promised me they're not going to open it. What are you talking about? I don't understand. I think, talk to my husband, please. Why? No, I'll talk. Hello? Hello, sir. Um, this is Roy from UPS. Yes. And uh, I had a package for you guys today. And I, I left the box with some kids around the corner. They're over on Harvest Lane. So what's, you, the, what, what, what's their address? Um, well, I'm 78 years old. I don't have any children. No, no, I know, I, I know. No, it's neighborhood kids. They, they were like three houses down around the corner over on Harvest. They, they were building. I know, everybody, I know everybody in the neighborhood. I don't know any house that has three children around the corner. Well, maybe, is they probably just visiting or something. They were building like a box fort. Oh, yeah, but and? I, I left it with them. They said they're not going to open it. They're just using it as part of the box fort. You know something? I don't believe you. Goodbye. Why don't you believe me? Can I talk to the wife again then? She was getting upset about it. <laughs> Great idea, McScat. That was a good one. I wish the wife would have talked to me for longer. She was fun. Face mob says I donated the package to a charity because they seem rich. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is Roy. I'm the UPS driver. Okay. Is this Sherry? UPS driver. Yes, I was delivering a box to you today. Yeah. Okay. Um, I gave it to a charity. Who? Um, it, it's uh, charity. Yeah, it, it's like they were taking donations that day. It's over by the church. I'm so sorry, I don't understand. You're a UPS driver, and you were picking up, delivering a box for me? I'm so, I, I don't know what you mean. Uh, yeah, you, were, you had a package delivery today, and I'm calling to let you know that um, I gave it to the church. Why? Just because it's the right thing to do. I'm a Christian. That doesn't make any sense. Where was the package from? Uh, I don't remember. Um, I just kind of, I marked it as signed. And I just dropped it off at the church because they, they, they had, like, kids out there with signs and saying it was for a good cause and everything. And so I, you were our UPS driver that had package that you were supposed to deliver to me, but you chose instead to give it to a charity. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, I know it's kind of a rich neighborhood where you live, so I know it's not that big of a deal to you, but it's probably... A big deal to someone else that gets the package. Where if did it, you get my number from? It was on the package. All right, and can I please have a number for the UPS that you deliver for? Oh, well, why? I mean, it's on your caller ID. I'm, I'm, I'm just. Why are you calling me? I know this is a spoof call. What do you want? What do you mean a spoof call? You're telling me that you took liberty to take my property and give it to somebody else. That doesn't seem like UPS would be doing something like that. And I'd like to know where you got my number from and why you're bothering me. We don't usually do stuff like this, but I'm a Christian, and it's my last day, and I just thought I'd do something nice for somebody for once in my life instead of just delivering a package. So I gave yours and, like, eight other packages away to the church. So what are you calling, what are you calling for now? I'm just calling to let you know why your package didn't arrive. What package? The package you were supposed to get today. I don't know who it's from. It's probably just Amazon or something. What's the point of... Do you, have a, do you have an ID number or a phone number? Um, well, who are you even? I mean, like the package was... Husband. I live in this house. Okay, well... And the, I think you're, you're farcing us. The address... The, the package was addressed to Sherry. 
so you can just be quiet. I'm not going to be quiet. Well, you're interrupting Give me your our right. UPS. You're interrupting our phone call, and I'm not interrupting of... shit. Give me your ID number or your name. Okay, you can stop cursing both. at me because I'm a Christian, and I don't appreciate it. Yeah, I, I'm a Christian too, asshole. Well, you don't you don't talk like a Christian. Go fuck yourself. That's not something a Christian would say. We don't care that you're a Christian. We don't really care that you're calling us with this bizarreness. I would just like to know the point. What's your point? You probably never given to a charity either, right? Who cares? I mean, I don't care. Well, the people who yeah, I just get care the... that you're calling me and lying to me and presenting some kind of political position, and I'd really like to know what you what you intend to gain. What do you want? It's it's nothing to do with politics. I'm I'm just a Christian now, and it's my last day of work. And they hung up. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Face Mob, for that one. Someone offered me money for the package. I gave it to them. And now my boss is making me call and apologize. <laughs> That's how I should start these out. My boss is calling and making me apologize. What a great idea. Still no word from Carlito. I might be quitting in 20 minutes. I don't know. Hello, this is Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Uh, this is Roy from the UPS. I'm the UPS driver. Yes. Um, I had a box for you today. Oh, you did? Yes, and my boss wanted me to call and apologize. What happened? Um, I gave your box to somebody else. Ah, uh, okay. And so I'm, what do we do? Well, do you know where you gave it to? Um, well, it was just some guy. He offered me money for it because, I, I don't know, like I'm sure you can just kind of file a claim with whoever it was from, like Amazon or whatever. Cause some guy gave you money for my box? Yeah, he just came up to me while I was driving. He saw all my boxes and he saw like a brand name on your box. And he's like, dude, I'll give you $20 for whatever's in that box. I'm like, okay. It was just like a lapse in judgment. And I'm, I'm sorry. Why in the heck would you do that? Because it was a lapse in judgment, and it was twenty bucks. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm really sorry, though. I like, I really am, truly sorry. Is this a joke? No, I wouldn't get about this. I'm a Christian. This has to be a joke. No, I wouldn't get about this, ma'am. Why do you think I'm joking? If you're a Christian, why are you going to sell a package of mine to someone on the street for 20 bucks? Well, uh, Christians aren't perfect. You know, everybody, everybody makes mistakes. And I'm getting written up for this. It's so. my Nordstrom. It was Nordstrom is what I believe. Yeah, it was supposed to be delivered today. That's what I was thinking. Like, how do they know that it's worth $20? It could be anything. Like, how much was it worth? Yeah, it was some foundation that was worth about... Um, a hundred dollars, I think it was. Oh, well, he got a good deal then. He probably just saw the the size of the box and guessed what it was. Makeup. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, just file a claim with Nordstrom, and let them know that you didn't get it, and they'll they'll just I'm sure they'll replace it or refund your money. Did you lose your job? I assume. Oh no, no, I'm just getting a write up. This is two strikes for me. If I get one more strike, then I will probably lose my job. You should lose your job. Yeah, well, it's it was just a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. I'm not the worst driver there, and I'm very sorry. Okay. Do you, I'll go through the, all the extra trouble and do all that. Do you accept my apology? No, not really, because I don't really understand why anyone would do that. Well, you should. I mean, I've had... I when I have a job, I take it seriously, and I would never do anything to jeopardize the company I work for. Okay, well, no, it was just a lapse in judgment, and my supervisor Carol, she's right here. She she just wanted me to apologize, so I'm apologizing. And it seems like you, really you should be accepting my apology. I guess I do. I guess I mean I'm glad you told me what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, just kind of like when my child has stolen from a store yeah. i made a candy i made them go back in and return the candy and tell them what happened so 
Sounds like your supervisor's doing the same thing to you. Pretty much. Like, this is just the first time she's caught me. I, I used to do this all the time. But I kind of stopped. But then, like, I just thought today, I'm like, you know, why not? 20 bucks. I can fill up my gas tank after work. All right. Well, you better not do it again. And I hope you will learn a lesson. Well, I mean, I'll probably keep doing it. I just, as long as I think I can get away with it. Like, she just... She she saw she just happened to to she was just kind of spot checking all the records today, and she looked at the signature and noticed it didn't match up with yours because I forged your signature. Hmm. I'm sorry. Can I press charges? Isn't that a felony to forge a signature? No, I don't think it is. I mean, you don't want to be like that anyway, do you? Why wouldn't I want to? Because it's just 20 bucks. You're really going to give me that much trouble over 20 bucks? No, it's not the money. It's the time that I have to go through now and file a complaint, reorder my stuff. I'm busy. I don't have time to do all that stuff. Well, I mean, it sounds like a first world problem, really. It's it's like, oh, uh, my, I, I'm not going to get my, my makeup as quickly. Like if, if, like, just imagine you explaining this to a starving African child. Oh, my God, this is a joke. No, I wouldn't kid about this. <sighs> Whatever, I'll call Nordstrom, file the complaint, take all this time out of my day, Can you all wait? my free time I have. Can you wait till tomorrow to call them? Why? Because I'll get in less trouble that way. What is, can I get your name? Sure, it's Roy. What's your last name? Well, I'm not allowed to give that out. Um, my supervisor can give that out if I put okay, her on. Okay, can I talk to her? No, I, I'd rather you not. I mean, I can put her on if you really need me to, but I just would rather not. Well, I mean, I, I, this is just unreal to me, so... I guess I would like to talk to her and find out what's going on. All right. I can get her. Um, do you, so you want to talk to her? Yes. All right. She she left the room. Can you hold on just a second? Can you tell her you forgive me, though, when you talk to her? No. I, how am I going to forgive something so stupid? It's just a lapse. In I mean, I'll forgive you in God's eyes, but I'm not going to forgive that stupid behavior yeah i know i admit it was stupid anyway I'll, I'll go let me put you on hold and i'll go I'll, I'll go yell at her to get on the phone okay all of our representatives are currently busy please stay on the line and your call will be answered by the next available representative so bad i don't know I did not get my Nordstrom box today, and it was scheduled to be delivered today with makeup in it. Carol, Ke Carol, that 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 bitch is on the phone. Can can you just pick it up real quick? Just pick it. She's being a bitch, and it's not my fault. Just pick up the phone. But I was supposed to get an orchid box today. Hello, this is Carol. Can I help you? This is the supervisor. Hi, Carol. Is this like call legitimate? Oh, of course, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here with the local UPS office here. So you have employees working for you that actually sell packages to people off the street and keep them working for you? Well, he's only done it. Tw I mean, he's only been caught at it twice. Only twice. So, uh, yeah, everyone else fires someone after one time of doing something like that. Well, we have a three three strikes rule. Is it? Never. He says the UPS rule. Wait a minute. Did you? I'm a policeman. Uh, I, I'll do an investigation on this. Why don't you give me all the information, okay? Well, it sounds like you're impersonating a police officer, sir, I, and that's a crime. I'm part of the. I'm part of the federal. I'm a part of the FBI. So let me get all the information so I can file suit against your company. So now you're impersonating okay? a federal officer. I think that's illegal. Okay, give me that. 
Okay, what's your name? I think impersonating a federal officer is a bigger crime than stealing a package. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, okay, you forged your, his, you forged his, her, uh, signature? Correct, he yeah, did? Roy did, but it's only a second strike, so it's okay. No second, that's too damn many times. I now, guess. give me your, now, I want your, tell, I want your name. Give me your name and spell it out. Your name is Carol. Hey, can you tell Michelle? Can you tell Michelle What's in the background? What's your last name? Tell Michelle to shut What's the fuck up. What's your last name? Tell that lady in the background to shut name. the fuck up. Hey. Hey. You don't. You don't. You don't talk to an FBI agent like that. Now, if you're a legitimate business, you would never talk that way. Do you understand? I thought you were a now, police you officer. Come, Are you a police officer and an FBI agent? I'm an FBI agent. Are you also with the CIA and the NSA and all that? I, you understand who I am? I understand you're a, an impersonator. I want your last name. You're a criminal because you're impersonating the FBI, and that's a crime. Yes, I am. You are. Yes, you are. Now give me a criminal. your last name. I refuse. So I can come and investigate you. You don't sound very convincing, sir. Look, I've got to do other things here. I've got shit to do, and I'm going to hang up. Well, you should hang up because you're a stupid jackass. I am not. That's why you should I hang up. I am not. You're an asshole. You're a stupid jackass. So is your wife. You are a big one. Your wife's a stupider jackass. I'm not his wife. I'm his daughter. Oh, you sound old enough to be his wife. Oh. I have a policeman actually coming to my house Saturday to buy a bed for me. I'm going to talk to him about it. You sound really old, so I thought you were his wife. I'm his daughter. I'm over here for dinner. Well, you just sound so old. I sound so old? Yes. <laughs> she did not like that. All right, that didn't go well. Pretty much every single person I've talked to today has figured out it's a joke. It's a prank, but at least we're getting a lot of answers, right? I thought there'd be more ringing phones today. Did it go that well, Molecular Heckler? <laughs> I don't know if I agree with you. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed it too. I'm just saying, you know, that fake police guy obviously knew I was kidding around. Hello? Hi there. This is Roy with UPS. Is this William? Okay, um, I had a package for you today. All right. And I wasn't able to deliver it because um, a guy stole it from me. So you're going to have to fi file uh, just a missing package report with whoever you ordered it from. Sorry about that. Um, what do you mean a guy stole it from me? I don't understand. It was a FedEx guy. It was a <coughs> driver. We got into a fight. And he's just... He's just trying to make me look bad, basically. Oh, this, is, this wasn't at the post office? No, no, this is, I'm with UPS, and the person that stole it was with FedEx. You guys are at the same location? No, no, we're different locations. Oh, okay. Di I diff different companies. It's, you know, FedEx, and then there's UPS, and there's DHL, and then there's the post office. Right. Well, I said this is like, this is like weird to hear. I guess. Yeah, I know. It's it's really getting out of hand. It's always like this during the holiday season, or you know, leading up to the holiday season. They did this to us last year. They kept they kept stopping our trucks and stealing packages. They kept having to call. So, uh, do you know the guy's name? Uh, Jerry. That's what his name tag okay. said, but I, I didn't know him personally, so I don't know if the, the name tag was real. And then, um, and it wasn't just yours; it was like seven other packages. He managed to grab out of my arms, and then he pushed me right. down. And what, what's your name? Uh, this is Roy. Roy, and you're out of the. What's that? I didn't say anything. Oh, what, Roy? What, what's your last name? Gerbel. How do you spell that? G E R B I L. And then, so you said UPS? 
Correct, yeah. Yeah, and it's the FedEx guy that stole it. So just whatever package you were expecting, just uh, file a report with them, and I bet you they'll give you a refund or send you a new one. Okay, did um, then this happen today? Yeah. What, did it happen at my house? Uh, it was like um, in your neighborhood, it was w like within four blocks I was delivering in your neighborhood, and he just kind of pushed me down and stole six or seven of my packages. They do this all the time, so it's like it's nothing new, really. So you filed a report on it with UPS? Uh, no, not yet. I'm still out doing deliveries right now. Okay. You didn't call the police or anything, or that's just weird? No, because we've done the same thing to them. It's um, like you might say we kind of had it coming. If somebody, like, you know, assaults you, that's kind of weird to me. Yeah, but we've done the same. Like, we've done, like, not me personally, but we've done worse to them. Let's just put it that way. Right. So, so if you haven't done it, then how, I mean, like, that doesn't make sense if, so why wouldn't you call the police? It's just this weird rivalry thing between UPS and FedEx, and they're just they're constantly okay. doing things to our our delivery trucks, and they flatten tires, and they've done stuff to our building, and they've run us off the road and stuff. And what what but location are you from? I'm here in Farmington. And then, um, don't don't you get your union involved? Um, well, like, it sounds like you're trying to solve a problem that you can't solve, so maybe you should just shut your mouth. I'm, I'm just saying, uh, like, on. it's... Well, you're going to talk to me like that. Well, I'm going to call the police, give them a police report, give them your phone number here. That's on my caller ID. No, there's no... It's, it would be stupid to fill out a police report for that's, this, because... Well, guess you, what? You told me to shut my mouth, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give them your name, give them your number, I'll call UPS. And what, you're going to you're gonna tell the police someone was don't. rude to you? Well, no, I'm going to tell them what happened. Okay. No, that you'll get it. Like, just file a report with what you order. Like, what's it? What is it that you ordered? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you what I ordered. Well, why? Your business. What I ordered. Well, Nobody's is it, business. Is what it I just ordered. something really sketchy, and you're embarrassed to I, tell me what it is? Nope, it's, it's none of your business. So I appreciate your time. I was just gonna give this number to the police, and I'll. Uh, well, you're being kind of an asshole. That. It sounds like you deserve to have your package stolen. Okay. <laughs> Buster Casey, thanks, Buster Casey, for that. Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Biggs is trying, like he's watching the chat room, but he can't listen because he's doing something else. So if everyone could just kind of transcribe everything that's said. Hello. Hi, uh, this is Roy. I'm with the UPS. We had a package for you today. Is this Victor? Oh, yes. Hey, Victor. Which, ad which address? Uh, on the Valley? Yes, uh-huh. Um, I, I wasn't able to come to your... It's like an apartment, right? That's correct. Okay, I left your package uh, about a block away. It's by the stop sign. Are you home today? I'm on my way home now. Okay, so like a block? Like if you're looking at your apartment building? Uh-huh. Um, like maybe a block to the, the, the left? Uh, I left your package underneath the stop sign. Oh, Okay. Like, like a block away. Um, like a block away from your building. Like not even near it. It's like right. It's like way down there. Okay. Um, it's like that's way. That's less than ideal. Yeah, yeah. It's way over there on the corner of uh, East. So it's like basically two blocks. Okay. Uh, for future reference, isn't there is there a UPS uh, office nearby? Yeah, but where I could pick them up. Um, you, you could, but you asked for it to be delivered to your place there. Right. Okay, so, um... But it seems like not that bad of a neighborhood. I, I don't think it'll get stolen. Yeah. Well, you never know. And then there's the weather. Yeah. Um, well, okay, well, uh, and, and so, um, who am I speaking to? Uh, my name is Roy. Do you know where that swimming pool is, uh, like, two blocks away? Yes. Like the Finston yes, swimming. I do. It's kind of like there uh -huh. on the corner underneath uh, a stop sign. Okay. I kicked it into, uh -huh. a, into like, you know, there's a ditch. Uh-huh. Okay. So it's probably fine. Well, 
I'll go and take a look, and if it's there, I guess uh, everything will be okay. Okay, I hope so. Because there, there was a guy following my truck. You know, those package thieves, they'll just follow us around. Uh-huh. Um, okay. Well, thanks for letting me know. You're welcome. I, I put it out there about three hours ago. Like you say, All right. you're on the way now? Yes, I'm on my way home now. Okay, yeah. I could have brought it up to your door, but I'm not really allowed. Uh-huh. So I'm sorry no, about No, I understand that. So uh, in the past, I know UPS people have left stickers on the door mm-hmm. letting, to let me know that oh, I didn't I, even, that, that's what I was expecting. I didn't even do that because, um, yeah, I, I can't even come up to the door. So I didn't even leave a sticker. That's why I'm making the phone call. I see. All right. Well, thank you for letting me know. Okay. I don't know if I put it by the pool or like a block from the pool, like back on West Lane. Uh huh. It, like it, it's hard to remember. All I all I remember. Oh, all is, right. It's under a stop sign in the neighborhood. Okay. Well, if it's if I can't find it, I'll give you a call back. Okay. Yeah. This is my cell phone in the truck. I'm I'm working for another two hours. Great. But okay I mean, then. There's not much I can do if someone Thanks. stole it. All right. Um, thanks, Roy. Okay, why are you, what's with the attitude now? Well, you know, if some, if it gets, you know, stolen, then I'm out, the, you know, or if it gets lost, or if it rains on it, or if a child messes with it. I mean, there's just so many things that could go, or if I just can't find it. I would have preferred that it be left at an UPS office for me to pick up during the day. Yeah, it was sprinkling when I left it. Yeah. So, that, so to me, that's a less than an ideal solution. Um, if you're not allowed to approach the apartment building, then just give me a call in the future and let me know where I can pick it up. Okay, like, well, I was just in a know, hurry. The UPS office somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just kind of in a hurry, and I didn't feel like it. Okay. Well, thanks for letting me know where it is. You're welcome. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I wanted him to ask me why I couldn't come to his apartment. That was the whole point of that call, and he wouldn't do it. I was going to use the sex offender idea from Totally Not a Scammer. Uh, Air- Aries says you should have paid extra for the waterproof box, Mr. Cheapskate. Parkman wants me to steal uh, Carlito's Lysol-, Lysol character. I left it with Lysol. <laughs> so now that guy is going to... Uh, be driving around his neighborhood looking for for his box. He's gonna be like, "Well, there's a stop sign. Might be there. I accidentally peed on the box." Okay, Zircon. I'm gonna say I did it on purpose, though. <laughs> My kids needed Christmas presents. <laughs> All right, porch pirates. Yes, sir, Jim Bob. Yeah, transcribe the show for Mr. Biggs. This is Chuck. Oh, hey, Charles. Yes. It's uh, Roy from UPS. Yes. I uh, have a package for you today. Okay. Are you home by chance? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Did you get that yet? Because I peed in the box. You put it in the box? No, I peed. I urinated inside the box. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I urinated in it. Like, um, there was no bathroom anywhere, and I really had to go, so I opened up your box and I urinated in it. Who is this? It's Roy from UPS. Um, <laughs> it didn't work out, Zircon. <laughs> I tried. I was hoping he wouldn't be home, though. This is Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. This is Roy from UPS. I'm the delivery driver. Oh, okay. Hi. Hey, um... I had a package for you today. Are are you home yet? Uh, one's always home all day. What? Yeah, well, there there is someone home currently, and there's someone home all day. Uh, we have a nanny who's home all day. Okay, well, I didn't ask all that. Um, we're having oh. problems with your box because um, my coworker Chad glued your package to the roof of the truck. So, is it okay if we just leave it at your door, but it's not going to have a box on it? We're just going to empty out the contents onto the porch. Okay. 
Uh, what is it? Um, well, I haven't opened it yet, but it's glued to the okay. roof, so I'm just going to slice it open with the razor thing, and whatever's in there is going to fall out. It's one of my coworkers just playing a prank. I'm sorry. Okay. I mean, as long as it's not broken, I have no issue with it. Well, when I open it up, like the, the, the box is glued upside down on the roof. Right. So when I open it up with the razor, it's just, everything's just going to fall straight out, like straight from the roof to the floor. Okay. I would be really careful then. <laughs> well, there's not much I can do because it's glued to the roof. So I'm going to razor it open and I'll open it and everything's just going to plop onto the floor. I'm, I'm just like, I'm sure it's fine. Okay. But you know, there's not going to be any packing so, material when it hits the floor. Okay. Again, I would be careful because if it's broken, then we're going to have to file a complaint, I guess. I, I don't know what you want from me. If your, your buddy glued it to the ceiling, that just sounds dumb. I, and it is. If the thing gets broken because you open it, there's not much I can do about that except send it back and say it was broken in transit. Yeah. Are they going to believe you, though, if there's no box? I don't know. Uh, it's, it's extremely odd. First of all, how did you get my number? It's on the box. It's like on the shipping label. Okay. Okay. And, like, you know, I, there's only so I, much I'm, I can do because when I razor it open, I'm, I'm going to have one hand on the razor. Well, I suggest so, you get a friend to help you do it or wait until someone's at the house to come by. When are you coming by? It's like 7 o'clock almost. I know. We deliver until 8. Um, okay. I'm, I'm in the neighborhood um, right now. Uh, it's just, you know, I just got to razor it open. I'm going to do that before I take off. And Hold whatever's in there second. is probably going to roll um, into the back uh, as I drive. What time do you think you're going to be at my house? I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can be there to assist you so you don't break my package, which you seem to be thinking is a possibility here. So do you have an idea of when you might be there, considering you deliver until 8, and that's an hour and a half from now? Or half hour from now. It's 7.30. Yeah, yeah. Well, within the next... Well, if I make it tonight, you know, maybe it'll be tomorrow, but... I just, I just know everything is going to fall, just plop to the floor whenever I razor this open. Okay. So well, just, if there's a second person around when you razor it open, then that's much less likely to happen. Yeah. So well, I'm going to do it before I, I start driving. Per- and then when I drive, whatever's what? on the floor is going to roll into the back probably. What? I'm just saying if there's stuff on the floor, when, when I roll, when I you know, hit the gas, it's going to roll into the back. You know, physics and stuff. Is this a joke? Yeah, it's a joke by Chad. He glued the box to the ceiling, and now I have to deal with it. He's like always doing stuff like this to me. That That was an idea from Wasted Memory. Thanks, Wasted Memory. I like that one. I can't... Like another one that I just do not understand why he believed that at all. I mean, like up until the very end, at least. Then he stopped believing it. Face Mob wants me to say that I opened the package and I listed the contents on eBay. And here's the auction number for you. Here's the URL if you want to go bid on it. Hello? Hi, uh, this is Roy from UPS. Is this Yolanda? Yes, it is. Okay, great. I'm I'm the driver. I, I had a package for you today. Oh, you do. Yeah. Okay. And I, wasn't I, expecting any. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm not. I I didn't really look at the contents, but I um like it's I've I've worked a double shift today. Yeah. And I really needed to use the bathroom, and there's nowhere to go, so I peed inside your box. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Hello. Hi. Uh, it's Roy. I'm with the UPS. Who's this? Okay. Okay. Sir? Um, what, what is the issue here? Oh, I just it's just that I urinated inside the box. I, I'm supposed to deliver a box today over on Westland Avenue. And I, okay. And you urinated in it? Yeah, because there I've worked a double shift today, and there was nowhere to go. 
Mm. It's like we used to. I used to go to the Red Lobster and go in there, and they won't let us come in anymore. You would go to the Red Lobster, and they won't let you come in anymore. Yeah, since the incident. Hmm. So you urinated inside the box. Yeah, I'm sorry, Daddy. You're sorry, Daddy. Correct. What else did you do? That's it. Um, but I can deliver it. I can dump out the urine as I'm walking up to the door. Oh, okay. So are you ready to get, you know, because there's, there's, there's like really crazy people at my house and I don't understand. They might want to beat your ass or. Oh, I'd like to see them try. Or, I'll fuck their shit up. Ooh, you're going to fuck them up. Huh? That's right. <laughs> you, you, th really? you think someone that pees in boxes is just going to stand there and take it? Mm -hmm. I bet you I'm crazier than them. So bring it on, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you want, what, 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 are you there now? Uh, no, no, not yet. I'm, I'm in the, no, no, no. I'm in what, the neighborhood what, right now. I'm just, doing just deliveries. Tell me exactly what time you're going to pull up because I just, you know. No, I'm not going to make it gonna that easy. I'm not going to be there, but I just want to know what time you're going to be there. I'm not going to make it that easy for you. Don't make it that easy. Just do what you're going to do. Anyway, put, put Yolanda back on the no, phone. You're, you're, no, no, don't put Yolanda on the phone. That's my wife. So I just want to know exactly what time are you going to be there, sir, my guy, my friend. How come you won't let and her talk on the how phone? Much urine, how much urine are we talking about? How come you won't let her talk on the phone? No, 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 no. What I want to know is where you, what time are you going to show up, brother? You have to make all of her uh, decisions for no, her. No, 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 no. Don't, don't act like you're, you're, you don't understand what I'm saying at this point. What's up? Let's, let's, let's come to the house. I don't understand. What deliver the box. Oh, I will. I'm, I'm going to bring the box later. Okay. All right. What time? Uh, very soon, because my shift, my matter, shift ends it, in 20 it, it, minutes. Somebody's going to be there regardless, so it doesn't matter. I'll just, like, drive by and throw it at the house. Yeah, okay. All right. What are you going to do cool. then? We'll see you. We'll, we'll catch you. It's going to, like, just be urine. Fling, I'm going to fling it through the air, and the urine's going to spin around like a fan as it goes to your door. I won't even stop the truck. Just... That was Yolanda making a comment about what my caller ID says. I think it's about time to wrap this stuff up. I think Carlito's going to go on the air soon. And that's exciting. Oh, and that was... Oh, wait, yeah, that was Zircon's idea again. No, I had another one I wanted to try. I want to try one more, this one last idea before we get going. So we got to get at least... We got to get one more person to answer. Just one more. Hi, this is Nancy. Nancy. <laughs> How are you doing, Nancy? Hello? Hello, Steven? Speaking. It's Roy from the UPS. I'm the delivery driver. Um, I was bringing a... I brought a package to your house today. Okay. And you're not there, are you? Over on Borgman? I am at my house. Because I was there earlier, and there was a gang of porch pirates that commandeered the package by force. You're kidding. No. You know what? I, I don't even recall receiving a package today. I know. That's because there wasn't one because these guys, like, jumped me on your porch, like, while I was up there. I saw I, them follow me you, around. I don't, I, I don't think it's my house. Um, is it, uh, uh... That, that's my house. Yeah. And I, I got a package, I believe it was yesterday... No, this one was today. It wasn't. It was just a yeah, so, earlier. Yeah, so I don't. I wasn't expecting any, and I, I. I don't think it's supposed to come to my house. Oh well, it had your but name on so, it. I'm so sorry that something happened to you. Oh, it's okay. It's not your fault. It's just it's those damn porch pirates. Like they 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 are they are really getting aggressive lately. They're getting nasty. I know. They should wow. let us carry guns. In my opinion. I I agree. I you know. This is our lives we're talking about. It's not just our little salary. I know. Yeah. So, um... But you know what? How can I help you? The joke's on them. Well, for one thing, you're not getting your box, because Porch Pirates stole it. Um, but okay. I was going to... I wanted to tell you, like, my one little victory in this whole thing is that... But I'm not expecting a box. 
Okay. Well, I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody just sent you a gift. That's possible. I did open it up, but I didn't look inside. And it said to Steve's or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. I had your name on it and your address. No kidding. Yep. Because I, I was at my house for most of the day today. You didn't hear us out there scuffling? No, not at all. Yeah, well, anyway, I opened up your box and I urinated in it. Oh, that's good. Because I, I didn't have anywhere else to go. I really needed to use the bathroom. Yeah, I'm glad. That so. was a good idea. You know, because there's and a lot of pretty women that live nearby. What does that have to do with it? Like, is that what you do to attract women? You pee in things? No, but it sounds like you that was important that you told me that. Who is calling? Well, no, I'm telling you that because that's that's the cool thing is the porch pirates stole the box, but it's a box of of urine basically. Oh, that's good. All right, I don't want to talk to you anymore unless you got something better to say. No, that's it. It's just I was on on your porch. There was a scuffle. Porch pirates urine. Great. Sorry to hear that. Basically, I had a boxing match with the pirates. Get it? <laughs> he does not like my joke. Or, I mean, I regret jumping's joke, because he told me to say that. Oh, let's see. Has Carlito started yet? Oh, my gosh. I think he may have. Holy shit. Solid rocket booster separation. Yep, yep. That, that sounds like Carlito noises. You know what? I'm just going to keep going until he actually starts talking. What's he going to do? Hi, you've reached Dr. Davis. Sorry, Mr. Hall. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What is this? Carly to hitting the mic. Carly is going to play us some Troy from Community. Oh, there's a good one. Molecular Heckler wants me to say I was sitting on their box like all day because I'm a midget or I mean just because I'm short. Carlito, everyone. Carlito's starting. It's going to be crazy. Hello, this is Chris. Hey, Chris. This is Roy. I'm with the UPS. Yeah. I've got a delivery for you today. I don't know if I'm going to make it out there today, but I'll definitely be there first thing in the morning. Okay, um, that's, that's fine. Okay, well, the reason I'm calling, though, is I've been sitting on your box all day because usually these the, the seats in the truck, they're adjustable, but mine got stuck in the down position, so I was just sitting on your box all day. Oh, um, which so it's kind of cr- box? What? Uh, which what? Uh, who does it say it's from? From? Oh, I don't. I I can't reveal that over the phone. You could be like an identity thief or something. It just says on oh, here yeah. though that it's to Chris. And, and oh, it has, yeah, that's that's fine. If it's if it's what I think it is, it um, it's just pieces of plastic, so it shouldn't hurt that at yeah, all. Yeah, but I heard stuff cracking in there today because like when I hit bumps, like you know I. I, I jump up and my bum lands really hard on it. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry about that. So it's probably broken, whatever it was. <clears throat> All right. Um, I guess just leave it. Um, just leave it on the steps, and I'll uh, take a look at it tomorrow night. I'm not leaving it on the steps because I don't want to drive that far. I'm going to leave it down the street. Like you know where the stop sign is on the corner. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to put it like right by the stop sign. Why would you do that? Uh, just because I don't feel, I don't, I, all right. So like I have this app for sex offenders. I'm a sex offender, you know, and uh, it says I can't go to your place. Like you're, you're within a, a specific radius where, where I'm not allowed to go go to where your house is because I guess you have kids or something. Okay. So, yeah, I just, I just can't go to your house, so I'm going to put it under the stop sign. When? Tomorrow morning, 
first thing in the morning. Uh, my shift starts at 7 a.m., so between 7 and 8, you'll be like the first box that I deliver. Can you have somebody else drop it off at my house? No, because it's mine, and I get commission. But it's like a box, and it has a big indentation in it from my, my bum. I, that's... Uh, I, can you just, like, have your boss do it or something? Because that's, that's ridiculous. No, I mean, my boss is busy. It'll end up sitting there all day, and somebody will steal it. Yeah, it'll just be by the stop sign. No one's going to take it. It's like a shitty, broken box. It's got a big indentation in it. It's a mess. Because you broke it. Because I was sitting on it. Because my, my seat was broken. And so you just took my box and sat on it. Well, you don't need to fucking yell at me. You know, I've got enough stress to deal with as it is. Um, You're the one who broke it and did that. You said so before you it was fine, and now you're acting like an asshole. And, and well, you're the one who told me you intentionally sat on the box and broke it and won't take it to my house and won't tell your boss what you did. Well, I, I know my, my boss will know what I did. It's just I can't bring it to your house because your, your house is in the app because you, you, you well, have to have then kids. Maybe you shouldn't have done bad things and you should tell your boss to take it over to my house. Well, maybe then. you shouldn't make assumptions about what I did. Don't, don't make assumptions about what I did. Uh, you Asshole. are on the sex offender website. Like you just told me, it's so. not my fault. I, I was like on, on a date. I met her on Tinder. Oh sure, and, sure, and, not your fault. Whatever. And, and, just and give the, it to your boss and she, have your she, boss she drop wrote, it off. Of my she wrote. House, she wrote. Hey, broken, shut up. Shut up. I will have them send she, it back. She wrote on the app that she was twenty-seven, and it turned out I she was twelve. Care. I don't care about your life. Well, you're the one that brought it up and said I did bad things, and I'm just trying to explain. She, she had a fake you know ID. I, just give it to your boss and have your boss drop it off at my house. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me how to do my job. I'm putting it by... Your by job is to drop it off at my house. That's what you are legally I'm required to do. Putting it under the stop sign. That's what you are legally required to do. Oh, you don't know the law. You're, you're not a lawyer. Yes, I fucking am. No, you're how not. How do you know I'm not a lawyer? Uh, how, well, you're making assumptions about me, like saying, uh, you know, oh, you're on the sex offender list. You told me you are. I I'm know. I'm stating the fact that you told me. Okay, but you you're you're, you you're implying. You told me you can't come by the house. You're implying so that it's my it. fault. Asshole. I don't care if it's your fault. You know what is your fault? Sitting on the box. You know what you're responsible That's for? That's not my Getting fault. Getting that box to my house. That's not my Get fault. Get the box to your boss. Tell your boss to put it at my house. Chad, Chad broke my seat, so my seat won't go up anymore, so I had to sit on a box. You should not have chosen my box then. You well, don't have to sit on a box. You could sit slumped. Well, you I, could have your boss fix your seat no, before I can't, you work. Can't even There's sit. a whole bunch of different things you could have done. I wouldn't have been able to see over the steering wheel. It. If I Like, what do you want me to do? Get in a car wreck? Then your box would have gotten damaged anyway. You know what I want you to do? Your job. Give it to your boss. Have your boss drop it off at my house. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to leave you it by the... You come down to my house. I'm going to leave it at the stop sign. With the bunch. That is not your job. You are supposed to take it to my house. The stop sign is not a legally acceptable place for you to leave it. You will get it all the way to my house, even if that involves the you taking it to your boss and having your boss drop it off. The fuck I will. I, I don't have to do shit. Like, I, I don't have to do what you say. Don't tell me how to do my job. Then get my fucking box to my fucking house. It's going to be at the stop sign. Just go to the stop sign. It's Quit being the lazy. The stop sign is not my house. You will do what you're supposed to do. Well, you're being... You're being kind of lazy. I'm being lazy, you useless piece of Do your fucking job. I am doing my job. I'm doing the best I can, sir. You don't, you don't have to yell at me. not good enough. Get the fucking box to my house. That's your job. If that involves having your boss drop it off on my fucking doorstep, that's what you have to do. If, if you're a lawyer, do you throw tantrums like this in court, too? You're like, yeah, your honor. Yeah. A fucking what is your name? It's Roy. What's your number, Roy? I know you have a number. It's on your caller ID, stupid. Just look at your phone. It's right Not there. your fucking phone number, you piece of shit. Don't call me a piece of shit. You have a badge number. Give me your fucking badge number. I don't have a badge number. I ain't no fucking cop. I didn't but say a cop badge. You have a bed. You have a driver number. Give me your fucking driver number. It sounds like you're just being racist at this point. 
How the fuck am I supposed to know that you're not a white guy or a black guy or an Asian guy? I ain't fucking seen you yet, you dumb fuck. How the hell can you even pull a race card when I ain't fucking looking at you? All I ask is you do your fucking job. You wouldn't talk to me like this if I were white. You are white as far as I'm concerned. Now you're being a stupid fucking dumbass. Well, at least I'm, I'm not talking a... talking to you like a dumbass because you're a fucking useless dumbass pile of shit. At least I'm not a racist. Now give me your fucking driver number. Uh, okay, it's three. Continue. It's just three. It's number three. I'm driver number three. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Now, send me to your boss. Send you to my boss? Send me to your boss. I, I don't have to do shit, you know? Like, don't tell me how to do my job. I gotta hang up, because, um, you know, like, Carlito's starting up, Give and I, I've, like, listened to his to show. He's playing two-pack. You called me. You oh, fucking care. called me. I know, but... To try and not do your job. You're really, now, you're really, transfer me to your fucking boss. You're really messing up my plan here, because, like, he's yeah, on in the background. Can you hair. hear him right now? Come on, can I get sh haired? Do you hear that? That's my boss. Yeah, put him right, on the can you spit phone. in it for him? All right, can you hear him? Put him on the phone. Can you hear him right now? Can you curse at it and say, God damn you, motherfucker, you? Okay, can you, like, talk to real sassy, like, black lady sassy? Do you hear him? You know? Hello? Like, roll your neck and all that? Can you not be a fucking I, retard and put your actual boss no, on the phone? No, that's him. Just, well, I mean, just talk. I mean, just, just take it to the corner after it's done and, like, curse at it a little bit. Like you fucking white. Like put say him. like some stuff. Put him on the phone and you get off the phone. On, All right, I'm, click, click. Like, you fucking white motherfucker, small dick motherfucker. You know, like you can say like. Okay, you are you Roy Fox? Like, can you say that to it? Hello, are you Roy Fox? Shit, is there anyone else there who would do it? Oh, why would oh, there think be about your children? Else in my right. house. Put your boss on the phone now, and you get off. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Well, yeah. come on. Hey, how you doing, my man? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was trying What's to make I was trying to make an order, but she doesn't understand. Hello, this is Carol. You were on hold. Can I help you, sir? Hello, are you Roy's boss? Yeah, Roy. Roy is uh, one of our drivers. What did he? Do? What did he do now? So he is refusing to drop the package off at my house. He is being extremely vulgar. He has called me a racist. He has called me a pile of crap. I did reciprocate because he is refusing to work with me in any way, shape, or form. He has a package which he sat on and broke. He admitted that it was not an accident. He intentionally sat on it and it broke. He will not drop it off at my house. He's trying to leave it on the main road so that it will get stolen. I need you to drop it off at my house so that I can see that it's broken, so that I can call it in and have them send another one. I, I'm not a driver, sir. I, I'm just the supervisor here at the UPS office. Okay, well, somebody needs to get that box to my house. Oh, no, Roy will. He's just going to leave it at the stop sign. That is not at my house. He cannot leave it at the stop sign. That is not acceptable. It yeah. must end up exactly on my doorstep like you're required to do. No, we're not required to do that. You're thinking of the post office. We're just UPS. You don't know what, what you're... You were hired to drop a box off at a location. That is my house. Leaving it at the stop sign is not fulfilling your legally required contract. Look, you don't know what you're you talking about. You don't know how things work around here. I... We're going to leave it at the stop you sign. then contracted to take a package from one place to another. That means to the exact spot. You don't that need exact to... spot is my doorstep. You, you don't need to talk to me like that. You know, like I... I will just talk because... to you however I feel. Well, you're kind of being racist, for one thing. How am I being racist? How in any way, shape, or form am I being racist? I'm not looking at you. I have not said a single racial slur. At all. Well, you wouldn't talk to me like it this. It's not if possible I were white. for me to be racist. When you when you start saying racist, in order for me to be racist, I would have to know that you are a race other than mine. 
You would have to know my race because if I'm the same race as you, I can't be racist towards you. This sounds like the kind of circular logic that a racist would use. Are you fucking kidding me? You are, this is ridiculous. In no way, shape, or form have I been racist. Well, you're kind of being racist the way you're yelling at me. So yelling is now racist. Just the fact that I'm yelling at you for not doing your job, that's somehow racist now? Look, look, I, I really, Carlito's show is starting, and I want to go listen to it with Roy, and we're just going to have... What is your name? This is Carol. <laughs> All right, and um, what is your designation? And uh, you need to know you need to your boss, because you have failed to do your job. No, look, you, you just, you need to calm the fuck down, sir. You're, you're just out to get yeah, everyone. I to the fuck down, man. That's real professional of you. You are at your job. I don't have to be professional. You do. That's unprofessional. Give me to your boss look, now. You know, you're acting like you're a lawyer or something, and, and like you know what you're talking about. Oh, really? Good, good. I'm glad somebody finally figured this out. Now give me to your boss, because you are now representing your company in a very bad way, and you are refusing to do what your company has All been right, hired let, to do. Let, let me so put you give on, me to just your shut boss up, shut now. Up, let, shut up. Let me put you on hold, okay? Don't tell me to shut up and give me to your boss. Well, if you'll shut up, I'll put, I'm going to press the hold button. Well, put, give me to your boss now. Okay, shut up. Just hold on, okay? Don't tell me to shut up. So what, shut what, up. what are you asking? Well, I, I called the state assistance information line, and they forwarded me to you. Specifically about, but, but, yeah, so I, I don't, this is not something. Lysol's missing. The, so the person's missing. Got it. Yeah, okay. but, I mean, he's probably just with his mom. We just need to get, you know, like, we're down to, like, not very much. We got, like, some shake left here. Hello. And the air conditioning isn't working, and it's going to get, like, really shitty around here pretty soon if we're not high, you know? Um, okay, sir, um, so that, that um, sir, hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. It's going to get us in trouble with us. He hung up. He finally hung up. All right, so we're listening to Carlito now. Everyone donates to Hurricane Michael Relief. God damn, that was insane. Via the Red Cross, head over to madhouselive.com slash donate. I will totally forward that on. So, sir, I feel like that you're probably trying to play a prank, and we no, are very no, no, serious. No, 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 no. And we are up here saving lives in the state of Florida, and well, we don't Jesus. appreciate you well, not taking this seriously. Your air conditioning is fucking broken. <laughs> I don't know what's going on on Carlito's show. Since I went into his airtime with my prank, but hey, everyone! So that's the end of today's show, I guess. That was an insane call. Yes, that you call someone else and play a prank. Okay. On. Holy crap! Um, everyone should go listen to Carlito. He's on the YouTube's. I'll post the link in the chat room here in a second. Fucking Homer, you farted! You fucking nasty! He's talking about his dog now. <clears throat> Uh, you can listen to Carlito over at Mixler.com slash Prank Call Nation. Uh, I believe his YouTube is YouTube.com slash Madhouse Radio. I think that's it. How about that hurricane, huh? Is it that bad? I don't know. I've been kind of out of... I know they got... It's hit. time for Carlito for the, for the next three hours. Busy. Everybody go listen. Hey, Brand. This is Josh. Long time listener. Second time caller. Hey, Josh. Um, I think it was episode... 501 where you uh, have the news uh, report about the King Temper and the woman said that it was the way to hack your phone yeah. for your personal voice over IP scam well, of some sort news outlet fly. Um, and I ended up calling that um, I think it was ABC 13 or one of the whatever the station was I ended up calling not being able to get a hold of that woman but I got a hold of someone at the station. Oh, great. And I told her, Thanks. like, I'm a listener, and that's not really what happened. Um, and I, she got really, really angry. Um, it was hilarious. Let's like, hear the call. But when I was like, yeah, I'm a listener of the show. All you have to do is, like, Google the number that was on the note, and you would have been able to find out that it was a prank call show. Did she call you Mr. So know-it-all? 
but yeah, I just wanted to say that. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, Brad. I love right. your show. Thanks, Thanks for Bye. tattling on me. Maybe they'll do a follow-up story to admit that they're wrong. And it was all just a joke. Bradley, this is Teddy. Hey. I called you, uh, I don't know, probably about a month ago, and I was talking about how uh, Not Brad left like one of the funniest prank calls, and I said, you're my favorite prank caller. And you're like, oh, uh, if you're the... Oh, man, who the fuck knows? I'm I don't like your impression anyway, of me. Makes me feel bad. You were saying, bad. like, oh, you said hey, I'm your favorite prank caller, but you said Not Brad made the best prank. I just want to compliment you on the prank you made when you were uh, saying that you dinged somebody's car, <laughs> and then you were like, oh, by the way, the pre- <laughs> Okay, sorry. Let me recap it. <sighs> you guys, this, this voicemail is a minute you and a said, half long. No, okay. I don't know if we're going to make it all the way through. Person said, is there anything else you want to say? The, uh, oh my God, such a bad message. Anyway, this you said you awful. did not kill John Vinnie Ramsey. You're not a racist, dude. That was so funny. You're hilarious. Oh, thanks. Oh my God, I love you so much, Brad. And by the way, I'm not going to talk about how this prank call is running more than a prank call. Holy shit. Man, just like call oh in God, sober I'm next not time. Gonna talk about call how, in sober. Uh, All right, bye. Is- Thank you for enjoying my confession to the murder of John Bonet Ramsey. Hi, Roy. Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Yeah. I just have three words for you uh, trick ass hole. Yep. All right. Thanks. Hope you got to listen to that new episode of Mr. Dabalina. Hey, Brad. It's Olga. Hey, Olga. King Richard and I just got done recording another episode of another prank call show. Mm-hmm. What, did I say that wrong? Yes. Bucked it all up. Tell him to Whatever. shut the fuck up. And we have a joke Fucking for you. Richard. Oh, yay. Why did the phone go to the hair salon? I don't know. To get extensions. Okay. That was great. Bye. Did you guys know that King Richard and Olga, they do their own prank call show? It's called Another Prank Call Show. And you can find it by searching for Another Prank Call Show in your podcast app. That reminds me, I need to add that to my podcast app. I got a new cell phone recently, and I have to re-add all of my podcasts. So let's see if that's in here. I'm going to search for it. I'm on an Android. It's taking forever to find it. Why is it taking so long? There it is. Another prank call show. Two episodes. I've only listened to one, but it was pretty funny. But there's three episodes here. What the hell? Yeah, there's three. So everyone go find that. Another prank call show by King Richard and Olga. And I regret jumping. It's okay, I guess. Oh, bad. It's Christine. So thanks for correcting my name on that FedEx episode. Uh, that You're was welcome. Nice about it, and I appreciate it. But anyway, happy 502nd episode. I'm pretty new, so I'll have to catch up on all right, that's it. It's 503, it's Kristen. Wait, I thought your name was Christine. Oh, bad. It's Christine. It's Kristen? It shows Christine on here. I'm so confused. Whatever, though. I probably pronounce everyone's names wrong. Hey, Brad. Stan Trucker here. Hey, Stan. I listen to the FedEx calls there. Just got an idea. With the peak season coming up, if you do any more FedEx calls. All right. Um, of course I will. Tell me, uh, with all the... I'm going to keep this going forever. Recently, in your area, that we were throwing them on the roof or the rough. Well, that's and, weird. Uh, if they happen to ask you, well, how am I supposed to get it down? Tell them that you guys are selling uh, hooks with like eight or ten foot handles on them or something. <laughs> <laughs> or ladders. Hi, Love we're the show. We're selling Take ladders. Care. Oh, here's the air horn. <laughs> <laughs> it's good here. All right. That's great. Yeah, it's weird. I actually threw some packages on the roof on yesterday's live show. But I swear I did that independently of this voicemail. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I should just say I used Stan Trucker's idea. Thanks for the idea, Stan Trucker. I'm glad I could use it yesterday. But yes, I need to add that on there. We're selling hooks. I can drop off a hook for 10 bucks. Hey, RB, it's the West Virginia guy again. Hey. I love love your last show, the FedEx thingy. So incidentally, I was a package handler at FedEx, and I was listening to your podcast on my wireless headphones. And I laughed my ass off when you call that lady about you left the package on the stop sign. That all my coworkers in the at the subway line or whatever you call it looked at me weird, and I was like, "Oh shit!" But that shit was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up the good work. Thank Talk you. To us. You should have taken out your headphones and played it out loud for everyone at the FedEx place, except for your supervisor, because they'll report me to the corporate office. We don't want that. Hey, Brad, I'm going poop right now. 
Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this voicemail before he makes poop noises. Hey, this is a general hey. observation slash PSA for the women out there. You know, we're in this era of feminism and you know, down with the patriarchy and girl power and all that. Yet in every single snowplow episode, pretty much, sometimes multiple times per episode, you'll be talking with a female recipient about, you know, replacing their roof or painting their lawn blue or something like that. And I was like, <laughs> I, I, I need a man. I need, you need to talk to my husband. Where's my husband? I, you need to talk to my I need a man. Where's a man? Like, you know, ladies. That's, if, that's if what they sound equal, like. If you're, you know, an equal part of the household of adults in living there, then, you know, deal with it. You, you never hear any of the male recipients going, uh, hold on, I need to let you talk to my wife before I can tell you not to do this. I've had a couple like, of those. You know, so when Every you, once in a while. Uh, it's not like you were being, like, vulgar or sexual or menacing. You know, you're talking about replacing their roof or whatever, and they seem incapable of telling you no without their husband's say-so. Yeah. So, ladies, Women. You talk a big game, but you're not that. walking the walk. Just get with it. That's right. I am Mildred Mundy, and I did not place a long-distance call. All right. Thanks, Mildred. Hey, Brad. Hey. This is Lumberjack Pat. Hey. You know, I don't know if this is going to get you in deep trouble or not, but oh, during the midterm elections, I Probably. swear to God, you might find some funny shit going on. You know, once every... I don't know. I'm not political. Hey, just say, I keep getting these pamphlets, and I do not support your candidate. So I just wanted to call you to let you know that I do not support... Anyway, I love you, man. Cactus, cactus. Oh, thanks. Maybe the mayor should call them. Just let them know that he doesn't like them. Hey, Brad, it's me again. The one that's pooping. Oh, uh, great. It's Blue Falcon. I just wanted to say uh, everything came out okay. All right. You know, it's a little runny. Okay, bye. Hey, Roy, Miguel B. here. How you doing, buddy? Good job. Great. I'm not your pal, Chief, but listen, yeah. uh, I love you. And um, and everything that you've been doing is just so awesome. And by the way, that last show you did where you kind of described out all your stuff going on with the whole, you know, you didn't, you didn't make any calls. You explained a lot of recent stuff happening to you. It's all good. I totally respect you for that. And Wait, I tell you what, what congratulations. Oh, the Brad's cactus uh, shack. You're rolling. You're rolling, dude. Thanks. All right, here's my question. Real quick, before I run out of time, I'm a Patreon $3. Hurry the fuck up guy and i want to go to five dollars but it keeps on asking me for like my address which i would not you know like to give out and I, and i appreciate your buttons and stuff but don't don't you trust me can't i do that without giving out my address can't i maintain a little bit of a yeah, just give a fake address like this phone call all right buddy talk to you later love you bye i didn't know that the five dollar level on patreon required an address i thought that was an optional thing I wonder if I have it set up like that. I'll have to look into that. But can't you just put in a fake address? I mean, make it obviously fake. Put in 123 Fake Street, any town, USA. Or put Roy, New Mexico. I'll know it's fake if it's Roy, New Mexico. Because I've never had a listener from Roy, New Mexico. That's my suggestion. 123 Fake Street. That's your address. And maybe I should just take the address thing off of the $5 level. It's not like I mail that much stuff out anymore. Especially to the $5 people. Hey, Brad. It's Carson and Jen. Carson and Jen. Uh, listening to the 502 episode and uh, wondering what the FedEx uh, announcing your Patreon members is about. It's happened a couple episodes recently. I don't think anyone's addressed it. So what? Wondering. What? Let me know. I've listened to that voicemail twice. I cannot understand what you're asking me. You're wondering about FedEx and then something about Patreon members. Probably when I'm editing this episode here in a little bit, I will understand you perfectly, and I'll think it's weird that I didn't hear you this time. But sorry, I don't know what you're saying. Hey, Roy. Just want to say you are awesome, and I love your videos on YouTube. They're Thank hilarious. You. Um, you always do a great job. And uh, check this cactus. Thanks. I do a great job, just like Frankie McDonald. Hi, it's Aaron. Hey. Do you ever listen to Longmont Potion Castle? Never. Um, cause his material is really good. I've been making prank calls this evening and when I'm not ripping off your material, I'm ripping off Longmont Potion Castle's material. I hear he's good. Um, that's pretty much it. I, I tried to do some hang up the phone calls tonight and they didn't go very well. So oh. I'm kind of upset about that. Bye. That's, that's too bad. Yeah. I've listened to very little of Longmont Potion Castle, although I've liked everything I've heard by them. 
they've done some really great stuff. I just, I don't know. I've never gotten around to listening to a bunch of them. He was interviewed on the Reply All podcast maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago. I can't remember. But they actually interviewed him, and it was really interesting, and it made me want to listen to him more. But once again, I never got around to it. Yo, Brad. Lion227. Hey. Calling you again. Okay. Sorry I haven't called you in a couple weeks, man. That's uh, okay. Just been I forgive busy, you. Been watching shows. But, yeah. yo, have you ever heard of uh, Jack Stratus? No. He does, like, these Papa John's. It, it's older. It has to be from, like, oh, 2000, yeah. 2001. Somebody asked me this at the Denver meetup. Are you from the Denver meetup? Because that would be weird if two different people asked me this within a couple weeks he of each other. Papa John, and I think they had, like, a reverse number. Um, no, he was just getting wrong numbers. People were calling his house because his number was similar to Papa John's. And he would just fuck with them and record it, and it was really good stuff. He would dial the wrong number he calls in. I'm sure you heard of him. Yep. Very funny. Long time ago. But yeah, man, I just wanted to say what's up. Uh, sorry, I haven't called you in a while. I wanted to come to the meetup. I don't give a shit. I couldn't. I couldn't make it, bro. I guess you weren't at the meetup. I'm out here wherever I am. It's and, okay. Uh, and All right. You're funny as hell, dude. Like I said, funny as shit. Thanks. Uh, I listen. I've listened to every show. I listen. To I get it all the time. I, I get it. I'm all awesome. All sleep. God, just I'm shut up. Sleep, motherfucker. Just shut up. So have a, have a good night, man. And oh, uh, thank I'll you. Talk to you later. All right. All see right, you, Roy. Bye, Roy Gerbil. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna look for Jack Strat. What's his last? Ah, shit! I forgot. I deleted the voicemail. I'm looking for him on YouTube right now. Oh, and there he is, Jack Strattiff. Pretty much his entire channel is nothing but Papa John prank calls. And I haven't listened to these in a really long time, but I do remember that they were really funny. Should I play one right now? Nah. Yeah, yeah, let's let's play just here's a short one. Thanks for calling, how can I help you? Yeah, you still have the uh pod top and deal? Yeah. Alright. It's better be good. Okay, can I have your phone number? Uh All right, what can I get you? Get, uh, mushrooms, onions, green pepper. This and one's from ground. nine years ago. Alright, that's your pickup. That's why it's on a landline phone. Oh, shit. I got uh, two delivery guys calling sick today. There's no way you can come pick that up? No. Uh, I don't understand. I really don't. It's, you, you want the food or not? I mean, I'm not going to sit here. Papa John? Yeah. You deliver, right? Yeah. Well, I got one delivery guy out already. That's what I'm calling. I mean, you want, do you not want the business? I can call somewhere else. I mean, it's your food. I don't understand why you can't come in and pick it up. Well, maybe because I don't drive. You have a bicycle? I mean, how far away are we? Are you fucking with me or what? Are you going to deliver me a goddamn pizza or not? I don't understand why you can't get off your ass and come pick it up yourself. Right. It's your food we're talking about. Okay. It's a one-man operation, pretty much, I'm this running out of here. Papa John's, right? Yeah. Okay, look, I don't drive. I'm asking for a fucking delivery. Are you going to deliver? I am running not? a, literally, a one-man operation. What's your name? Jack. Jack? All right, asshole. I'll see you tomorrow. Whatever. So they're pretty much all like that. Just people trying to reach Papa John's, and they accidentally call his number. I'm going to put a link to these in the show notes if you guys want to listen to them. And one more thing we need to listen to before I end today's show is the follow-up call. I told you that the live show that I did yesterday was a pre-show to the Madhouse show with Carlito. And that last call I did, that completely insane last call, went on for so long that I went into about, I don't know, five or ten minutes of Carlito's show. But as soon as it was over, I sent all of that guy's information to Carlito. And I called into his show, and we called that guy again together. And I'm just going to play a short clip of that call. This is just the beginning part where only Carlito was talking to him. This is just a small clip. To give the phone to his boss because he was refusing. Okay. Once she got on the phone, I said, hello, thank you for responding. Can I please just have you bring me my package? Yeah. Now, has she heard me be angry before? Probably. But when she first came on, I attempted to be nice. She then proceeded... To be very vulgar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, listen. Chew an aspirin. All right. <laughs> so what you're, you're saying is that they said it first. That's, your, that's what you're going with as far as this part of the issue that we're resolving. They started it first and that... That's yeah, like, like grade can I, can school give logic. Give me a story, uh, mister. A uh, few weeks ago, I was speeding. 
and uh, no, I, I was I, don't I was need, in I'm, I'm sorry I don't need stories they are on the clock okay well listen TV so am I is, listen I got pulled like, over on, I was dri- I was going 20 no, miles over the speed limit on. shut up shut I up I am the customer you will listen to me oh you're Mr. Entitled fucking customer no I'm not your two employees are the Mr. Entitled and Mrs. Entitled. Right, right. I am the customer who is trying to get my box delivered in the easiest manner possible. Okay. Whatever I do or say is well, my I'm, personal all right, shut up. thing. They are for UPS. They shut are up. expected and required to be polite. Okay, With well, regardless you're... of what I do, they are expected shut to be polite. Up. Shut up, all please. I do and telling me to shut up is not polite. Shut up, please. I said please. Any and you're not listening. Professional. And in addition, saying right. at the end of something I think this just does not goes on make it and polite. on. Now, Says who? Well, you're, you're an expert on that, on etiquette now, on telephone etiquette? Because I work on the phones. This is my grind. This is what I do. Right. Saying the word shut up on the phone. As shut up, please. <laughs> shut up, please. Please does not. Shut up, please is not acceptable. Please be quiet. I love Carlito. Chew an aspirin. Who the hell says chew an aspirin? <laughs> so you can hear the rest of that on Carlito's show. Uh, probably not for a couple weeks, though, unless you're a Patreon on Carlito's show. You can find links to all that stuff over at madhouselive.com. But he's getting better about posting the shows earlier. Here, let me see where he's at on current shows. Yeah, it looks like the last show he posted was last week's show. So he will probably have that posted in another day or two or three you know, within the week, and it goes on for a long time. We just get bored and just, I don't know, it just, <laughs> it's its stupid, but it's awesome. I bet you today that guy, he's probably taking the day off of work, and he's spending his entire day talking with FedEx toll-free numbers and, and just trying to get people fired and throwing a big old fit about everything that happened yesterday and wondering where his damn package is. I wonder if he drove past the stop sign just to check. He drove up and down the block once or twice, checking underneath the stop signs just in case his package was there. But we told him we were just going to send his package back. We're like, fuck it. We don't want to deal with you. We're sending it back. We're saying non-deliverable. Oh, yeah. And I called into Carlito's show again, like later in the show, like the last, uh, I don't know, 45 minutes or so. And we did some more calls together. Laugh Track Matt was on there with us. So it was Jag TV. It was fun. We called at least a few Planet Fitnesses. I know Jag TV actually got a customer on the phone and talked the customer into going behind the counter and setting off the lunk alarm, which was a pretty great call. So go listen to that over at madhouselive.com. It's the October 11th, 2018 episode. That's going to do it for today's Snowplow Show. Thank you once again to the sponsors of today's show, DeLorean Jackson, ICU, Lion9, Mr. John, and Nikish. Thank you for keeping the shows going and making more shows happen and all that stuff. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to support the show, please do that over at patreon.com slash phone losers. By the way, thank you, Henrik, for that song I played right before the live show today. The one after the intro, but before the live show. I think I forgot to mention that on the beginning of today's show. And thank you, Nick Caesar, as always, for today's show art. He listened to the live show yesterday and posted an awesome picture of... The, that FedEx customer blowing up at us. And he also did this other picture of FedEx deliveries and of getting boxes peed on and stuff like that the day before when I did the other show. And I'm going to try and combine both of those on today's show art. Nick Caesar is an amazing artist that has been doing art for us forever now just to be nice because he loves prank calls and he loves the PLA and all that stuff. Thank you, Nick Caesar. I think everyone should go support Nick Caesar by visiting his website at scary-art.com. That's a hyphen, a dash, symbol, a minus, scary-art.com. Go there and buy some art, support his Patreon. He's also got a t-shirt shop over at scaryart.spreadshirt.com. And not only does that have his regular art stuff in it, he's got just a ton of PLA designs in there. Stuff that you cannot find anywhere else. He's got Tuck Pendleton and the International Space Station. He's got cactuses driving around in cars with a rocket launcher saying, who's a good boy? There's a pranks giving shirt. There is so much stuff in here, you guys. But you just have to keep scrolling and you'll find so many PLA designs. There's the Happy Ding Timber shirt. Here's a Sensei Doug shirt, Order of the Snake Eyes. 
which is an awesome design that Evan Reality was wearing at the Denver meetup. That's the only way I was able to know that he was a PLA person walking in the door is because he was wearing Nick Caesar's Sensei Doug shirt. There's a shirt that says Cactus This Cocksucker. There's another one that says Hang Up the Phone. You gotta be crapping on my balls. This is gonna be a fuck job to edit. There is like every single reference to every single snowplow show ever on Nick Caesar's shirts. Sorry I peed on your doorknob. There's a shirt for that. There's a cactus that's just peed on a doorknob. It's amazing. So please go support Nick Caesar and all this amazing artwork he's done. Holy shit, here's one I've never seen before. That has a weird telephone on wheels with the PLA symbol. Oh, it's a beer hat. He's wearing a beer hat. The telephone's wearing a beer hat. This is awesome. So yeah, thank you, Nick Caesar. I'm going to put links in the show notes on snowplowshow.com to all of his stuff. Please support Nick Caesar. Oh, and Nick Caesar, he was just on an episode of a podcast that I've discovered recently because of Nick Caesar called Day Drinking Saved My Life. And it's like a 30-minute interview with Nick Caesar. It's really interesting to listen to. If you're into that sort of thing, I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. All of our show notes today is going to be nothing but Nick Caesar, but that's all right because Nick Caesar is awesome. Uh, also, thank you to Micro Corgi for the intro song you heard today, the chiptunes version of the Snowplow Show theme song. I'm going to end today's show with another song by Micro Corgi, who really seems to enjoy that shifty pop Snowplow Show song. This is another version of that song. It's a trance version of the Snowplow Show theme song. Thank you, Micro Corgi. And thanks, everyone, for listening. See you next time. Are you fucking goofy?